Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition of uh, the AxesOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Hope everybody is uh, having a good trading day. Some pretty good action. We'll talk about that uh, in a second. So, you know, you've got a linear market, right? You have a very, very aggressive linear market. And the, the one thing that I've, I've noticed, and not necessarily in the live webinar, I think, I, I think everybody's pretty much um, you know, pretty much focused at the, at the you know, pretty much at the task at hand. But I'm starting to see a lot of signs of reckless thinking. Okay, and you know, for all of us in the live, we know, you know, we trade ranges. It doesn't make a difference to me. Tesla to the upside, Tesla to the downside. It doesn't make a difference. So when you have a linear market like this, right, very very big linear move, and again now you have for the last you know two three months, uh, the market's really been numb. To these China headlines. So, for example, like this afternoon, uh, there was a headline that, well, China, U U.S. Phase One, eh, you know, there's some lot of sticking points not going as smoothly as possible. The market dipped for like 30 seconds and they came right back up because again, there is no fear and the market's gotten numb to it. So, when you get into this linear market, right, this really, really big aggressive linear market, and you have a lot of the, the, the a lot of the really aggressive names just doing their thing. It's like the stairway to heaven. You got your Teslas going nuts and now your Disney's with their, you know, 100 billion or at least 10 million subscribers and Roku, just an absolute monster. What's happening is a lot of the new traders, they, they, they're sipping the Kool-Aid, okay? And the one thing they are avoiding at all costs is the, you know, the main idea of gravity. We'll talk about that uh, more during uh, the weekend update. You can see it, you can see it brewing. Um, it's like, for example, if I posted a, a, a pivot on anything, right? To the downside on on Twitter, for example, on, on Amazon yesterday, I posted a, a, a I forgot if it was either on Twitter or it was stock twits a pivot to the downside, blasphemy. Oh, what are you nuts? Black Friday, bad. I'm like, dude, it's just a trade. Relax. Apple, you know, Amazon sells off 15, but the key is again, you, you have that mental, you have that crowd mentality of oh, nothing is going to go down ever, ever, ever. And again, the market's amazing, amazing market. Again. I don't care if this market goes up or down, but once it starts going really, really linear, you're getting, you're falling into a lot of bad habits. Okay, you're you're buying stocks at levels that forget about the word pivot. You're buying at stocks at levels that momentum is three days ago, four days ago, and now it's just on on major, major fumes. So when you see the pulls, some of the pulls intraday on some of these names, a lot of people will turn around and say, "Oh, it's a big deal. It's just a buying opportunity." But when you see the aggressive nature of these pools, you kind of see there's something more to it. And if you look at the NASDAQ 100, and again, I'm not calling for a destruction of equity prices. If you're watching this for the first time, I, I, look, I trade ranges, man. I trade ranges. I trade sentiment. Uh, it doesn't make a difference to me. I had one I had one short trade today. I think it was that Tesla scalp in the morning. Everything else to the upside. So it doesn't make a difference. But but again, I'm a realist, okay? And when you see the NASDAQ 100, and again, we'll use this as a, as a barometer, just keep on going up and up and up and up and up. And again, you can make an argument with me and say, well, Danny said yourself, this is the traditionally uh, most aggressive time of the year. You got your Thanksgiving coming up in two weeks and followed by the Santa Claus rally and the January effect and everything's all great and everybody grows you know exponentially and everybody's much more handsomer and more prettier and more smarter and the, the food tastes better, right? Everything's great. Again, technical analysis and gravity is also something that you have to understand is real, okay? And when you look at the last three days of the NASDAQ 100, again, we're gonna use this as a barometer. You could go through all the other indexes in your own time, but you could see something happening, right? You have three days in a row of lower highs and lower lows, right? And today, the, 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 the bulls did a great job, fantastic job defending the 10-day moving average. Great job, okay? And equity prices, uh, rebounded, the buy, the dips came in, all the people you know that, that believe the market will never go down. Say, see, you idiots, the bulls, bulls rule, bulls rule, bears drool. Okay. Um, so all of that stuff, right? So the bulls are doing a great job, phenomenal job. The sentiment is off the charts. And I, I tweeted today that I said, I believe that the fear, the, the greed factor is off the charts. Okay. It's off the charts. It's not good anymore making a dollar, $2 on a move. 
People want five. People want ten. Well, you know, I want to be six foot five and dunk the ball backwards. But okay. Um, so we're getting to that point of the rose colored glasses are starting to get tattooed on a lot of traders. And the problem is, we talk about this a lot of times. The market's just not going to tap you on the shoulder and say, "Hey, yo, we're gonna net, we're gonna yank you and everything you made in two weeks. We're gonna yank from your account in one day." It's just gonna do it. And it's something that we really have to pay attention to. Again, I'm giving the bulls the benefit of the doubt every day. Again, I say this in the most childish way. If I had explained it to a six-year-old, I would explain it this way. Okay, it's a bull market till it's not. And what does that mean? Until technical damage starts to occur and prices start to confirm. The one part I want to watch, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, whatever it is going forward, I want to see how the bulls continue to defend this area. You can see uh, night, the $200 level on the Qs, the lows here. Today's low was $200.22. So as long as the Qs are defending, right, the, 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 the bulls are defending this $200 area on this rising support, it's all good in the hood, baby, right? It's all good in the hood. Everything, all good. Once we start confirming and there's a buyer strike and we start going lower in stocks that are traditionally really aggressively rallying that can't rally anymore, for example, like Amazon. Yesterday was in a really, really aggressive pivot yesterday, right? The yesterday that pivot 1767 went to the 50s, right? When stocks like this are supposed to rally and they can't, that's a problem, okay? So again, we're just talking here. Don't lose your minds. Uh, you know, nobody's preparing for Armageddon. We're just having a, a discussion like adults the worst case scenario of all the things. Again, if you're trading with rose colored glasses, you're gonna get run over. So you have to know what happens if, right? And what happens if, if we start making that rolling top, right? That rolling top, and again, not saying it will, we gotta watch, and they start losing that $200 area, the sentiment will change very, very quickly. If you're a new trader, you might not recognize it in time. And again, there might be a very, very aggressive pull below that $200 area into the 197 and the Qs. Now, again, before you turn around and say, well, what's the big deal is on the, uh, it's only a $3 move on the Qs. Listen to what I'm saying. It could be a $3 pull on the Qs, and that happens in literally on one interval. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel it very, very uh, aggressively. Until then, again, bulls have the right to dance. Uh, bears, you know, they're just literally stepping on ice. Uh, waiting for it to crack. So something has to give here. Uh, again, again, does it need to pull back? Nothing needs to happen. Again, fair value is uh, fair value is the last trading price. That's exactly what thing. There's no such thing as overbought, oversold. Rallies continue, sell-offs continue. Nothing needs to happen. But again, until it does, this 200 level is going to be very, very important. So going into tomorrow, again, Fridays have been uh, traditionally a really, really good premium day. Uh, People are putting in speculation money bets, especially in the weeklies and the option markets. And whatever's strong is probably going to be strong. And whatever's weak, well, there's nothing weak because we're in a linear bull market. Um, so that's that. So going into tomorrow, again, I have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. I am uh, conscious of this $200 level. I'm also conscious of three days in a row of lower highs, lower lows. So I want to see what happens next. Because again, if you believe in the theory and if you watch the workshop in many, many times, you, you know that the 10-day moving average is the birth of the trade, right? It's the birth of the trade. So if it loses the 10 day moving average, well, I guess it's the death of the trade, right? I don't know, maybe possibly. So it could get down all the way down to 197. Uh, good action today, right? Good action today, um, both mostly long, right? Mostly long, uh, here are the pivots uh, today in the room. I feel so dirty. I traded now BYND three times, three days in a row to the long side. It's, it's, I feel dirty, but it's been working. Um, it's actually been very, very, it's working today. I, I kind of didn't like that it didn't defend the upper Bollinger Band. We had that trade perfectly dead to rights, and I knew it was going to trade that 83 and a quarter supply. We'll talk about that in a second. I just don't like the fact that it sold way back down. So again, we might have to start looking at the bottom of the range. So here it is. You know, here, here's the day. Uh, Tesla, 344, several times if it builds below, can flush. And I said this, and you guys will watch this um, on the on the on the uh, webinar recording tonight, you'll you'll see it. I said I'm not going any size. We're in a bull market, you know. I'm not going to go any size in this thing. But if this thing starts breaking down below 344, it could be a decent trade. Again, here was a 344. Here's a 344, 344, 344, 344. You get the point. It broke 344 and uh, went down like a dollar and change. Um, I didn't do any size in this thing. Again, I'm just scared of well this. Uh, but it was a nice little scalp. It traded right to the bottom of the support. I want to watch in the next couple of days. Again, Tesla is a machine. I love it. It's awesome. We've done great with this thing. Okay. I'm just waiting for clues, just like everybody else, uh, for an exhaustion, a backside move, all that good stuff. And again, you can see how Tesla defended the five-day moving average. So again, if Tesla starts 
losing the five-day moving average. Again, if you believe in the theory of stocks go from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, here's demand and here's demand, right? You have a lot of room down. So again, might not happen tomorrow, but I am watching for the backside move. It's just called gravity. Don't lose your minds. I love Tesla. I love the stock. I love the car. I just don't care which way I trade it. Uh, Netflix, again, did a great job today. Uh, yesterday was a nice pivot from the 283 to 281.50 day moving average. It held today. Obviously, we we're waiting for that 281 that never came. Uh, BYND was, was good, man. Three days in a row trading this thing to the long side, right? So here was BYND, right? Here was BYND. Here was the 81.50, right? Here's the one 81.50. And I knew it was going to go right to supply at 83 and change because, well, again, stocks trade for supply to supply and demand to demand. So beautiful trade. Nothing wrong with BYND. Um, scalped it perfectly, okay? Uh, shop. Uh, excuse me, not shop, uh, Roku. Again, I put two pivots in Roku, one to the long side, one to the short side, because again, pivots play no favorites. They, they just don't care. Here was the, the long side pivot, uh, 142.90, 143 needs to build. Nope, there is a little bit of supply, 143.30, so it needs to get through that and build as well. If it does, it can get to 145.40s, right? So yeah, it did that, all right? So it did that. So here's the, here's the, here's the 140, where are we? Here was the 142.90s, right? 142.90s, 143. It traded to supply, right? It traded to supply, and then it got through and just kept on going as well. So really, really big move on Roku. But again, the point of the, the pivots are it doesn't make a difference which way. Before it confirmed, right? Before it confirmed, and I said, oh, nice, right? Nice spike earlier, right? That was the first spike early into supply. And then I wrote, oh, hell, if it turns around in 141, it held twice. If it builds below, they could flush. Obviously, to get to that area. But that's the point. We don't care which side of the pivot it confirms as long as it confirms. So nice move. Definitely, definitely nice move on Roku uh, to the upside, obviously. Uh, shop, nice trade there. I didn't take shop. Uh, I wasn't just watching it. Uh, shop needs a new base. Uh, 315.50, 316 to go more. Uh, I said there's a shot against the 319 again. It was just a, it was just an interval trade. It wasn't supposed to be uh, anything magnificent. So here is the build right here off this uh, 1550, and it traded right into supply of uh, 319.89. So nice job there uh, for you guys who took it. Reda obviously, well, exp expanded today. Had nothing to do with that. Walmart pre-market highs never got there. Roku, 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 just a machine. Roku, Roku, Roku shop. Like I said, first supply at 319, went to 319.89. So nice move there. Um, huge area coming up, right? That's the pivot we took. Huge area coming up. Nice. You know, give us a quick dollar and change. And I said pretty, you know, very aggressive start to the day. Very, very aggressive. I also uh, saw the news about who the hell, who the hell downgraded? Was it Maxim? Maxim downgraded Apple uh, pre-market. I saw that news very, very quickly. Um, shorted it. I missed. I, I missed the the hardest cover when it when it flushed down into what the hell did it flush down? The one sixty two fifty. So I thought it was going to get down to one sixty two. I, I was shorting them at one sixty three. 30s or 40s, I forgot. Um, but nevertheless, I, I kind of missed my last big pull, but it was a pretty good trade nevertheless. So pretty good start to the day. Uh, Roku, again, 64.40 supply. It just went right through that as well. Um, and that's it. And that's it. Um, and that's it. So the moral of the story, right? Moral of the story, VRNS was also good off the last night's watch list. And again, this was last night's watch list. Uh, pretty good area. Again, dips on Roku, Disney, they work pretty well as well. Uh, BYND, we had to pay a little higher for it, but the moral of the story is, again, uh, you're only as good as your research. So going into tomorrow, guys, I am bullish until I'm not, okay? I'm bullish until I'm not, and the most important part is let's wait, right? Let's wait for confirmation. So let me give you guys some ideas uh, for tomorrow's, uh, let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow's session. Uh, I'm not going to give you the beta ones just because, again, I just can't have uh, artificial flow into these names. I need to see them flow pretty nicely. So I'm going to give you guys a couple ideas that are not beta related. Uh, DDOG, uh, beautiful chart. I mean, beautiful, beautiful chart. Had a huge move yesterday, rested today. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts building 42. It could you know, really, really go. Uh, DTIL looks pretty good as well. I have no idea what the hell this is, but it doesn't really make a difference. Huge expansion channel today. Uh, right through supply. Uh, if this thing starts building above uh, four, uh, 12 bucks tomorrow, right? If it starts building above 12 bucks tomorrow, you can have a nice uh, second day move there. Uh, CNST uh, was a big, big move a couple of days ago. It finally busted out above this channel here, stopped at supply. Again, stocks don't stop uh, randomly, they stop into supply. 
And if it starts reclaiming supply tomorrow over 39, who knows, man? Again, in this market, anything's possible. You could get a move. Again, anything can happen. You could get a move uh, into the 46 area. And one chart I really like, uh, we'll talk about, obviously, uh, Tesla tomorrow uh, and NVIDIA and all that good stuff. But look at this serious logic chart, man. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous chart. Uh, serious logic. Uh, if it could reclaim tomorrow, 73 bucks, man, look at this beautiful, beautiful chart. It could go. It's just like VRNS uh, that, you know, some of you guys started buying. Again, this one's way too thin for me, but again, it's the same chart. Uh, so VRNS, uh, you know, the nice little breakout. I think the stock goes higher in the next couple of weeks, but you can see here, CRUS, if it starts reclaiming that $73 level, it can go. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Tomorrow is Friday. Thank God my brain is completely shot. I'm exhausted. I'm going to relax a little bit, watch some football, have some dinner. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a great night. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Let us know what you learned today and what you'd like to see from us in the future videos in the comments below.